Good evening. We're back with more Marvel Champions, and this evening it will be a card review of the cards in the Captain America Steve Rogers Hero Pack. This was the first one released after the core set along with Miss Marvel, and was released at the same time as the Green Goblin Scenario Pack, which we'll be playing with a Captain America and a Miss Marvel deck. Let's take a look at the cards and see what they look like for progression play true solo. Now I can't say what these cards will look like in multiplayer or when all the cards have been released. I'm just reviewing them as if they were coming out in order, which is what a progression series is. So we've got the core set cards and now we'll take a look at Captain America and see what his hero cards look like and see what the aspect cards and basic cards look like and what decks they might help. So the first card is the hero card, Captain America. 2-2-2, two, 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 very balanced stats. Avenger soldier tags, I can do this all day. Discard one card from your hand, ready Captain America. So this is similar to Arc Reactor with Iron Man, except that Arc Reactor you don't always get turn one, it's not innate, and Arc Reactor is an initial investment of two, and then it doesn't cost you anything for the rest of the game. So it is better than this ability, but less consistent. Captain America's is built in, but it does cost you one resource. Now, usually at this stage in the game anyway, you do have at least one card in your hand that you don't really want there, because not all the cards that you'll include in your deck in order to get up to at least 40 are going to be good. And so discarding one card from your hand, often you won't mind doing that at all, I think. So this is a pretty strong ability. It's hard to say where he's going to rank with the other heroes. Currently my ranking is Iron Man first, then Captain Marvel, then Spider-Man or Black Panther. It's pretty close. Black Panther might be a little stronger in general, but very inconsistent. And then Spider-Man and She-Hulk. So where's Captain America going to rank? We'll see after we play him, but I like this ability. So he's got the standard 5 hand size, 11 hit points. Steve Rogers, reduce the cost of the first ally played each round by 1. That's very good. Recovery 3 is mass. Set up, search your deck, and discard pile for Captain America's shield and add it to your hand. That's good. So you draw a card and reduce the cost of your first ally on turn 1. That's a, that's a very strong start. Cost reduction is good in every single card game I've ever played. So he seems to work well with leadership, which is good because leadership is one of the best aspects for true solo since it allows you to control bosses with multiple plays of Mockingbird. Agent 13. Three cost, that's pretty expensive. Two thwart, one attack, three health. After Agent 13 enters play, remove two threat from a scheme. So you can get 2, 4, 6 threat removal and then use her as a chump blocker for 3 cost. Uh, it's not bad. It's kind of on the border between good and like amazing this makes the hero type of card. It's certainly strong. We're probably going to be... You're not, it's not going to be a card we're going to throw away when we get it. It can't match Iron Man's threat removal ability, his primary one aside from his thwarting or his arc reactor which is his Mark V helmet. The efficiency on that card is pretty crazy because it only costs one and you can use it every turn for the rest of the game. But this is a, a pretty good card. This will help out Captain America with those high threat challenges because you can do like a threat removal bomb of four as soon as she enters the board, but she is pretty expensive. You're not going to do anything else on the turn that you play Sharon Carter. Fearless Determination, zero cost. Captain America gets plus one thwart until the end of the phase, draw one card. Well, you're never going to be that sad to see this because you're always going to be able to cycle it if nothing else. So that card is just fine. Sometimes provides a benefit, sometimes just cycles. Heroic Strike, three cost. Deal six damage to an enemy. 
If you paid for this card using a strength resource, stun that enemy, that's good. Stuns are very good, especially in solo because they stun is a defensive move which allows you to free up your HP or your you don't have to use your action to defend against an attack. And six damage is like right on the border again. Now, in terms of cost efficiency, it could be a pretty strong card, really. This is this is a good card. This is a card I think you'd be happy to have in any deck. So far, the Captain America cards look pretty strong. Shield block, when you would take any amount of damage, exhaust Captain America's shield, prevent all of that damage. Since you start with Captain America's shield in your hand, this is very good. That's like similar to backflip, which is Spider-Man's strongest card. So they're really giving Captain America some strong tools here. Shield toss, zero cost. Discard X cards from your hand, then return Captain America's shield from play to your hand. Deal 4 damage to X enemies. That's crazy good. 4 damage for the cost of discarding one card is good. 4 damage to each enemy. Yeah, this is just a crazy good card. These, these cards in the Captain America pack seem very, very strong to me. I'll try playing Captain America against Ultron on Expert Difficulty, and then I'll try playing against Green Goblin on Expert Difficulty. And we'll see, but he does seem very, very strong to me right now, at first glance. Steve's Apartment, one cost. Exhaust Steve's Apartment, draw one card and heal one damage. Eh, okay. In solo, you don't really want to be in alter ego form that much, so probably won't get that much use out of it, out of Steve's apartment, and may even end up throwing it away sometimes to pay for other stuff. But it's all right. Occasionally, it'll be okay, but never really exceptional. Captain America's helmet. When Captain America would be defeated, set his hit point dial to one instead, then discard this card. So that's going to be really good. That'll allow you to survive one of those double attack turns that you get from time to time. This is a card I probably would almost never throw away. I usually play it when it's on the table. It'll turn losses into a win sometimes. Sometimes it'll just sit there not doing that much. Captain America's shield. So you start with this in your hand. It's restricted, maximum two restricted. Is there any other restricted cards so far? No, I haven't seen any other restricted cards. Okay, so this is the first one. Captain America's shield. Captain America gets plus one defense and gains retaliate one. So he's actually a 3 defense, 2 attack, 2 thwart character, which I think makes him the highest stat character in the game. 7 stats. Let's see, Iron Man has 4, Black Panther has 6. She-Hulk has 6, Spider-Man has 6. Captain Marvel has 5. So yeah, with this shield that he starts with in his hand, he has the most stats of any hero in the game. And very strong hero cards. Super Soldier Serum Exhaust to generate a resource. So you want to get this out early and then you can generate an extra resource every round. These cards are crazy good. So that's it for the Captain America cards. So now we're on to the new leadership aspect cards. I will say Captain America's hero kit one of, if not the strongest in the game. As of, you know, this progression series has only covered six heroes so far. So yeah, one of, if not the strongest hero that I've currently covered. Can't say he's one of the strongest heroes in the game yet, but certainly one of, if not the strongest hero that I've covered so far. Let's take a look at the, yeah, definitely, I would say worth buying this hero pack just for Captain America and his hero cards. Whatever aspect cards we get here are just going to be 
gravy. We'll take a look at them. First up, we got Falcon, four cost, so he's very expensive. Two thwart, two attack, three health. Those aren't that good of stats for his four cost. After Falcon enters play, look at the top three cards of the encounter deck. For each treachery looked at this way, remove one threat from a scheme. He probably will want to play the leadership aspect with Captain America. Falcon's worth an include in that deck. Does he make any other decks better? I would probably include Falcon in my Iron Man leadership deck, though I might throw away Falcon a lot. I end up throwing away Vision a lot because he's just too expensive. And Falcon may be in a similar situation. I don't think he really provides that much for what he offers. He, can, he gives you a scry, meaning you look at the top three of the encounter deck. I've never valued scrying very highly in Lord of the Rings LCG, and I have the feeling it's going to be similar in, in this game. You get some threat reduction in addition to the four attack or four thwarting that you get. That's not that good. He's overcosted. He'd be good at three cost. I think I'll probably include him in leadership decks, but he'll get swapped out later as more allies become available, and he probably won't get played a lot because of his four cost. Squirrel Girl, two cost. 1-1 one, one stats after Squirrel Girl enters play, deal 1 damage to each enemy. Uh, situationally good against Ultron. Otherwise kind of underwhelming. You'll get like, if there's no minions on the table, you get 2 attack for her 2 cost. That's, and a chump blocker, but that's not very good. So it... It's another ally similar to Falcon that I might include just because of the lack of availability of good allies. So it's good to have more allies because leadership aspect really relies on drawing allies early to serve as blockers that helps you control the boss's defense so you can focus your other efforts on thwarting or whatnot. So I probably would include Scroll Girl, but she'll get swapped out as more powerful allies become available. Though situationally dealing one damage to each enemy will be good against any future bosses like Ultron that bring a lot of 1 HP minions into play. Hawkeye we've seen before. Wonder Man. 2 cost 1, 3, 3. As an additional cost for Wonder Man to attack, you must discard one card from your hand. This is a very strong ally. So he can get 6 attack, plus a jump block for, for basically 4 cost, but at this stage of the game, you often have cards that you want to throw away. Just in general, you often have one card left at the end of a round and don't really have a use for it, but you want to cycle it out for something more, and Wonder Man gives a use for those cards. 3 attack is really strong, so you can get 6 attack if you run first aid in your deck, you could potentially get a lot more out of this card. Uh, I like this card. I would definitely include it in leadership decks, and I would expect that it may stick around for a few cycles, or may a cycle is, uh, is a card that gets included in decks a lot. Avengers Assemble, four cost, maximum one per round. Ready each Avenger character you control until the end of the phase. Each Avenger character in play gets plus one Thor to plus one attack. I haven't found readying allies to be that good generally. It just use up their damage faster. I guess if you really need a chump blocker, you don't re usually need like damage bombs from your allies. And if you do, for to pay four cost for it is very expensive. I think this card is way overcosted. It'd be good at two cost, but at four it's way way over costed. I don't think I would run this in my deck. Unless there's becomes like really strong Avengers synergies or cost reduction or something. I don't really see this seeing play. We're into the basic cards. Honorary Avenger. Play only if your identity has the Avenger trait. Attached to a friendly character. Attached character gets plus one hit point and gains the Avenger trait. I probably wouldn't run this unless the Avenger synergy is really strong. It is zero cost, so if there is really strong Avenger synergy, then maybe. But it's only going to go on an ally. Allies don't stay on the board forever. They're very temporary. Usually they're 
there for crowd control to, to deal with boss attacks, at least in solo play. And I don't think it's worth investing in cards to buff them up very often, so... This seems like a thematic card along with Avengers Assemble, but not a very good one. Energy we've seen before, Genius, Strength, Avengers Tower. Two cost support. If each of your al allies has the Avengers trait, increase your ally limit by one. Exhaust Avengers Tower, reduce the cost of the next Avenger ally played this phase by one. Well, how many Avengers allies are there at the moment? Let's take a look. Currently, if we're running leadership, we've got Falcon, Hawkeye, Squirrel Girl, and Vision, and Wonder Man. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Five cards that can have their cost reduced by Avengers Tower. We'd need for it to happen at least twice per game in order to just break even with this card. Preferably three times a game to make this a decent card. Uh, I really don't, I think it would take a very long game for this to have an effect, so probably it's a better card in multiplayer. In solo, I don't know that I would run it. Doesn't say one per, oh it is, uh, it does have a unique symbol next to the name, so you can't run multiples of, multiples of it on the table at the same time. It seems like it would be too hard to, to make this good. But there are long fights where you, if you got it out early it would be good, but if you got it late it would just be bad. I, I don't think much of this. So far the Avengers synergy seems very meh. Mockingbird we've seen before, Quinjet. After your turn begins, place one time counter on Quinjet. Put an Avenger ally from your hand into play with printed cost equal to or less than the number of time counters on Quinjet, then discard Quinjet. So this is a cost reduction card that works only over time. I think this is very good. I would definitely run it in my leadership decks along with the Avengers allies. It's the first Avenger synergy card that I've seen that I thought was good. I think this is good. Definitely worth an include. This will probably make its way into other decks as well. Not just the Captain America deck. I'd play this in my Iron Man leadership deck as well. Would make it better. Is it going to turn a bad hero into a good one? No. For that to happen, they need threat reduction really. So far we haven't seen any threat reduction cards for other decks other than Captain America. The leadership aspect cards, that's not really their focus. And so, so far we haven't really seen anything that makes any of the other decks, the other heroes that I've covered better. But Quinjet is a strong card for the leadership deck. Make the call we've seen before. Strengthen numbers. Exhaust any number of allies you control. Draw one card for each ally exhausted. I like it. Sometimes you have multiple allies sitting out just waiting to chump block and you don't have anything to do with, with them. I would run this. I would swap out some of the useless cards that I've been running in decks just because not all the core set cards are good and you need filler. So this would be good. I do expect that it will get outclassed by other cards later because it situationally does nothing. If you don't have any allies just sitting on the board waiting around, and that's often the case, the overwhelming, overwhelmingly, most of the time, you won't have that situation where you can take advantage of this. But when you do, it's going to be good for zero cost. So I'll include it, but cycle it out. Probably quit it pretty quickly as more cards come out. Power of Leadership we've seen. Followed. Justice card attached to a side scheme, max one per scheme. When attached scheme is defeated, deal four damage to an enemy. That's not helpful. We need more efficient thwart, more efficient threat reduction for heroes that aren't very good right now in solo. This doesn't do anything for them. 
expert defense. When your hero defends against an attack, it gets plus three defense for that attack. It's zero cost. It's a fine card for defense. I don't think protection is good in solo play. But, uh, doesn't do anything for the heroes that are weak right now. Enhanced Awareness, two cost, uses three mental counters. Exhaust Enhanced Awareness and remove one mental counter, generate a mental resource. So you get three resources for two cost. Um, okay, that's all right. Nothing special. I'd include it over other useless cards that I never use. Probably throw it away sometimes, probably cycle it out as more as better resource generation methods become available as the game goes on. But it, it would get included over some of the garbage cards that I've been using in decks. It's an upgrade over some of the garbage cards. Which isn't saying much for it. But it's nothing special and there are some decks which really need science resources for specific situations and it would be good in that deck. Good in those decks. Enraged. Aggression card attached to an ally, max one per ally. I don't really like ally upgrade cards because they stay on the board so infrequently and often even die before their time to boss attacks, but attached ally gets plus two attack and takes plus one consequential, consequential damage after it attacks. This seems pretty bad outside of the one use case, which is the ally Hulk. So if it's only real use is to combo with Hulk, I don't think this is very good. And that's it. So those are the hero cards and the additional cards, the additional aspect and basic cards included in the Captain America pack. And my assessment of this pack is that it is well worth a purchase. And I will look forward to playing Captain America shortly. So thank you for watching.